today I'm going to talk about the TBI group, the Traumatic Brain Injury Group that we've just started. Uh, this is also co-led by David Tate at University of Missouri in St. Louis and Lisa Wild at Baylor. This is actually a, a consortium of consortia. We're collaborating with several groups that already exist. There's Sensi, the Chronic Effects of Neurotrauma Consortium, and Intrust, which is the Injury and Traumatic Stress uh, group, and both of those involve studying um, military service members who have traumatic brain injury, or in some cases PTSD, um, along with a few others. And uh, there's also the CARE Consortium, um, which is Concussion Assessment Research and Education, and that is a multi-site study of college-aged football athletes. We've got you know groups in seven countries so far that are interested in participating. So one of the big problems in TBI is that it is really heterogeneous and it's really prevalent. There's one in four individuals will have a, tra a traumatic brain injury or concussion at some point in their lives, but outcomes can differ tremendously. And when you have the heterogeneity of TBI combined with um, what can be often a subtle effect in mild TBI, it makes it really hard to find, find what's going on in the brain. Um, obviously there are some individual differences, but if we can find um, certain patterns that link to certain types of pathology, certain types of injury, then we can hopefully try to understand, um, understand recovery, understand indicators of whether someone's going to have a better recovery, worse, and if there's any, any point at which we can intervene. This is kind of an umbrella um, effort. You know, our, the main effort that we are, we've submitted a grant on is on mild TBI. Um, in veterans and athletes and, and um, other, other groups, but um, I, we also are going to start a pediatric uh, study. Uh, we have an existing study at UCLA where we found a subgroup of kids that have a significantly poor outcome, that we see this divergence between kids who have a good outcome and kids who have a bad outcome, and that it's not related to demographic or, or injury variables. Um, so we don't quite know what's going on yet. And this has been uh, my most exciting result in, in the TBI field in the last few years. And this has led to, uh, we're starting a new study to try to replicate this and see if it generalizes. This is gonna involve three sites, um, UCLA and USC. Uh, Cape Town in, in um, South Africa and a hospital in Brasilia. And if it replicates and if we can find uh, you know, what's actually driving this difference, this might help us um, pinpoint areas where we can intervene and improve recovery. Finding if there are particular um, signatures in the brain that, that correlate with different types of injury that's something that's, that people always ask me, if, you know, did you look at whether someone was hit on the left side of the head or the right side of the head? And um, even when you have that data, no, you don't have the numbers to look at that. But that's hopefully what we're going to be able to do here to say, you know, if somebody had um, a contusion or if they had this type of hematoma, how does that play out uh, in terms of recovery? Um, ideally, we would work with, uh, hopefully some of the groups that we're going to work with will collect blood. Um, because we're starting to think that inflammation might play a big role in recovery um, and we'd like to look at that across as many varied sites as we can. Because we know that there are some, some genes like the APOE risk variant, um, if, you, if you carry the risk variant of, of APOE then, and you have a traumatic brain injury, you're much more likely to have, um, have a poor outcome or, or develop Alzheimer's at an earlier age. So, but that's just one. Um, there are many others that could mediate this. So um, this will also be in collaboration with other working groups as they identify genes that impact brain integrity. We can look to see if they, uh, on top of that, show any sort of difference within those who've had a traumatic brain injury or not. With TBI, um, as I said, it's a, it's a heterogeneous disorder, so you might have some some sites that have more severe injuries and, and lesions are a problem. Um, other sites are only studying kids. So uh, we certainly can't uh, combine all of them together like you might be able to do in some, some working groups. But that's even more the reason why we need to create this large group so that we can have you know, pediatric subset and the military subset and look at mild and, and look at all of these, these different groups. If people are interested, they can contact me um, or 
David Tate or Lisa Wilde. It's hard to scan these subjects sometimes, and it's hard to find a good number of them, um, even though it's quite prevalent. Um, so no data set is too small. We, um, I mean, most of the data sets have data already collected that they're going to going to be contributing, I imaging data um, of any any type. You know, we'll have sub analyses for that. Um, but we have been talking with a group in Lithuania that doesn't have their data yet, but they have the patient base and they're very interested in, in starting. So, um, yeah, that's that's taking it a little further back than what Enigma usually does. But hopefully, we can partner with them and get some get some funding so that they can start scanning their subjects.